All right, seventh graders, lesson 59, adding, adding integers on a number line. If you recall, integers are, are numbers um, like 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and also their opposites, negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, and negative 4. So integers are whole numbers, uh, include the opposites, positives, and negatives. Uh, if we make a number line, we can put some uh, dots on that number line. And let's see if this works a little better. There we go. So we create a number line here. And now I just need to go back and say this is 0, this is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. Negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4, negative 5, and negative 6. So we've created a number line. Uh, all numbers on this line except for 0, we, we consider them uh, signed numbers. And what do I mean by that? What do I mean by a signed number? Well, a signed number is the sign that we see in front of the number. So in this case, it's a negative. These are The sign here is negative. Now, we don't see any signs over here. Technically, if we wanted to, we could put pluses in front of them. So these are signed numbers because they are signed in a positive manner. These numbers down here are, are negative numbers because they're signed in a negative number. So that's a little bit of review. Okay, so again, when we say signed numbers, we, we spell it the same way we, we would say we sign our name. So signed, we're looking at what signs they have in front of them. All right. Let's take a look at take a look at the concept here of uh, an absolute value. So I'm going to start here with the number line again, and I'll put a few uh, dots on the number line here, and I should label those one. Actually, I want to you know to erase those. I would like to have 0, 1, 2, and 3, and a negative 1, negative 2, negative 3. So we are talking here about absolute value. What is the absolute value of a number? So let's take a look first at uh, Mr. Negative 3 over here and a positive 3. So these are the, uh, the signed numbers that we see over here. These are signed. They've got their positive or their negative sign. And we would say this is negative 3. This is positive 3. And again, the sign is a positive and a negative. But the absolute value of these numbers, the absolute value is 3 and 3. They don't have any symbols in front of them. We just say 3. And the way that we determine that is we go back up the number line and we always say how many jumps away from 0 is it? How far away from 0? 1, 2, 3. So 3 is 3 jumps away from 0. We're not saying it's positive and we're not saying it's negative. So here we don't say it's positive or negative. We're just saying it's 1, 2, 3 spaces away. Same thing for negative 3. It's 1, 2, 3 jumps away. So we say its absolute value is 3. It's 3 away from 0. We don't say it's a negative or positive, even though it is negative. And in math, math mathematicians, of course, they, they came up with a way to be able to uh, designate this. And so they use these lines like this on either side. And what that means, oops, Well, we lost that there. But anyways, what these signs mean here are negative 3 and a positive 3. So we're asking ourselves, when you see that, you're asking yourselves, what is the absolute value 
oops, value of this number. In other words, how far away from zero is it? And in both of these cases, the absolute value of positive 3 or the absolute value of a negative 3 is 3. So we're asking how far is the number from 0. So let's take a look at example 1. We have got 3 minus 5, and it's between the absolute value symbols. Okay. So let's uh, add a number line here. All right, so here we see our number line. Uh, we're going to start at 0. And uh, we start over here with a positive 3, so uh, we should go out to positive 3. And now we'll draw a line up. And now we look back up at the problem that says to go minus 5. So we head in the negative direction, 5 jumps. One, two, three, four, five spaces. And we go down here, and we see the number is a negative 2. So if we were to rewrite this, then we would say the, abs the answer is the absolute value of negative 2. And so the correct answer for that is 2, because the absolute value of negative 2 is 2. We're asking how far away is negative 2 from 0, how many jumps, and we see that it's 1, 2 jumps away. So the absolute value of 3 minus 5 is 2. Not a negative 2, but 2, because in the end we would be 2 spaces away from 0. All right, uh, in example 2, they ask us to show each addition problem on a number line. So I've got negative 3 in parentheses here, plus a positive 5. And that's A. And for B, I've got negative 4 plus a negative 2. All right, let's get some number lines in here. All right, so let's do A here. I start at 0, line up, and I go to a negative 3. And now I go up. And now I need to go plus a positive 5. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. I end up here with my arrow. I go down, and I see I'm at a positive 2. So the answer to this is 2. Now I go down to B. And again, I go up from 0. I go to a negative 4. Go up a little bit, and it says to go negative 2 more. 1, and you can see my number line ran out of room. So I can quick do a little, uh, little editing here. And then we go down from there, and we see we end up at negative 6. So the answer here is a negative 6. All right, let's go on to example 3. Uh, we've got... Negative 2 plus a positive 5 plus a negative 4, and they want us to show this all on a number line. All right, so let's show this on a number line. We go up from 0, and let's see, our first number is negative 2, so we go that direction. Up again, all right, and our next number is positive 5, so we go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And then I go up again, and I got to go negative 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. And now I can go down, and I end up at negative 1. So I can say the answer here is negative 1. Example 4, we talk about a troop here. Uh, began the hike on the desert floor. 126 below feet below sea level. So let's get a little drawing in here. All right, here we have our drawing. Over here, we've got uh, the ocean. All 
All right, and here's uh, the beach coming in over here. So if we were to, to continue this blue line all the way across, that's considered sea level. So I'm going to kind of use a different color here and just kind of dot that all the way across. That's considered sea level. And in this example, the troop is starting on a desert floor 126 feet below the sea level. So they're starting out down here at the bottom part, and that's 126 feet below sea level. So we usually express that as a negative 126. And the troop camp for a night on a ridge uh, way up high. So they're going to be up here up here on this ridge, and this ridge is at 2,350 feet. So that means they hiked from way down here all the way up to that level. So what was the elevation gain from the start? Well, this measurement is from above sea level, so a positive 2,350 feet. But we don't want to forget that they also went this amount down here. So this is this just measures the 2,000 feet. Plus we have to add another 126 feet for right here that they went down, started below. So we take these two numbers and we will add them together. 2,350 plus 126. 0 plus 6 is 6. 5 plus 2 is 7. 3 plus 1 is 4. So they gained in elevation overall 2,476 feet by starting way down here at the desert below sea level, going up 126 feet, and then going up another 2,350 feet to their camp up here. I'm going to add a little smoke or something there from their wigwam. Anyways, that's their uh, elevation gain. All right. Let's go on to example five. Chrissy did not have any money. In order to buy a friend's birthday present, Chrissy borrowed $5 from her sister. Later, Chrissy received a check from, for $25 from her grandmother. After she repays her sister, how much money will Chrissy have? I think it would be wise here to start with a number line. And let's put some points on that number line all right and let's label those points on the number line zero we'll go up by five ten fifteen twenty twenty five and these are dollar amounts negative five negative ten negative fifteen negative twenty and negative twenty five so Chrissy starts here with no money. She borrowed $5, which means she now owes $5. She's in the hole, some people would say. She's in negative $5. However, Grandma comes to the rescue and gives her 25 So 5 10 15 20 25 And we see that she ends up at 20 so this is a negative 5, and this is a positive 25. So we can say, well, that means she ends up with $20. Now, is there a mathematical way to express that? Sure, she started out with a negative $5. She went in the hole, and then she added 25 more dollars, and that equals $20. So after she repays her sister, she will still have $20 left. That's it for today. You can get started on your practice set, 7th graders.